Tesla Q2 production 2023. All the numbers that's fit to fit. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla weekend. A quick thank you to Peter, Tesla Colt, Millen, Jagger, or Trinet, and David for choosing to support me on Twitter. Twitter subscriptions are now live. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of a big deal. I uh, appreciate your support. It's the reason I'm actually able to have, to have a channel. Hey man, this month I uh, might make a buck or two, who knows? So let's just get into the numbers. SNX, last quarter we had 19,437. I see no reason why we can't have 19,437 yet again. Seems like a reasonable number, why not? Um, I see no reason it would be higher. Capacity is higher, we know that. Demand, not super strong. They've started exporting to some new countries, but that doesn't always translate to, to, <laughs> to enough. The looks are more dated than you might like. The performance doesn't necessarily make it work. Hey, if you want to sell more, why don't you, why don't you make a one-time offer just for like a month where you say, anybody who buys an SRX this month, if you have FSD, we'll let you carry it forward. Because there are folks who will not get rid of their older cars because they paid for the self-driving suite that they don't still necessarily think they have. And they paid less for it. In Fremont, we've got the three and Y. Now, uh, I'm saying that even though there's an extra business day, production is down a little, because even though I believe the amount of retooling that's been done to allow for production of the new Model 3 Highland Refresh, I don't think it's had that big of an impact. I think if they took one of the two lines, it was only down for part of the quarter, and uh, it would have been the less productive of the two. The other one would not be moving at 100% of its greatest possible speed, but 110%. And there's not necessarily an indication that it's actually down at all. In that regard, the three number could be low and the Y number is already adjusted up from last quarter because Y, it's a gangbuster seller and the line is unaffected. Um, in Shanghai, we've got, so that's, yeah, three and Y. On the three, I would also point out that registrations are still very strong. If they're producing fewer, they're still selling a ton and these are still very popular cars in the US, they're still moving. The price cuts have, I believe, worked out just fine. For the, uh, yeah, Fremont 3 and Y. So my number is 127.701. For Fremont 3 and Y. For Shanghai, we've got, uh, we've got one extra day, one extra business day, but really we've got four because there's no Chinese New Year getting in the way. No Chinese New Year, that gives you four extra days. But I'm still showing 6% less, more or less, 6% ah, less, because I do believe they've done some work to take the three line down to work on the refresh. Now, taking it all the way down, certainly not for the whole quarter, certainly not all the way down, and it's, uh, I believe that the Model 3 refresh line for Highland is being done in, um, in the design studio there at the northeast corner. I'm confident that's what that building is, uh, but we don't know. The lot next to it is sealed off. It's never used for anything else except the Model 3 Highland so far. It's the only thing we've ever seen in there. So, extra day, four extra days, really. 6% drop. And the other thing with the Model 3, so the Model Y, it's going gangbusters in Shanghai. It's a big number, it's gonna be huge. And you should feel comfortable with it because uh, there's no reason uh, to think it would have slowed down. It's a little bit bigger. But the Model 3, um, is not down by much, if at all, because uh, we've seen huge exports to Canada and Europe. This car is still selling in huge numbers, but I still said, just for safety, let's assume it's 6% less, uh, not than last quarter, but 6% less than the daily adjustment once you factor 87 days versus 91. That gets us to Germany. Well, we know they hit 5,000 a week last quarter, but where are they now? Well, we haven't seen an announcement. It appears to me to be at a higher, uh, moving at a higher clip because we have a second loading and logistics lot uh, by the, between the Motor Works building and the uh, under construction rail yard. So that would tell me uh, that production remains strong. What we haven't seen is enough registrations to convince me that the numbers are substantially stronger. Lines two and three do not appear to be operational yet. Um, and I don't have sources at Giga Berlin. So uh, what I'm thinking there is, I just uh, assumed a modest 
4% growth over last quarter, um, and the numbers are on the screen. In Texas, I did similar math. We know they hit 5,000 a week last quarter, but they hit it later. And while their loading and logistics lot also looks good, we also have no reason to believe that their uh, ramp is any further uh, along or that they've got any more um, lines running. Lines two and three are going in. They are being configured. They do not appear to be running yet. 2% growth over last quarter, which gets us to our good friend, the semi, which gives me one. Ah, I had a source at Gig in Nevada, uh, but unfortunately he is no longer there uh, because he had a penchant to leak. You will go through my whole channel and find no indications of who it was because I don't disclose my sources, uh, but he did uh, post something on his own, which got him fired. So, uh, you know what? I'm gonna take out the name of what I, what I said there. Yeah, I think even that's a little too much, uh, too revealing. So it, uh, I know when he was still there, they were producing one a day. So I'm just going to say 90 semis. <laughs> that's, a, that's, quite a, that's quite a sausage fest. That's uh, quite a lot of Pringles cans, if you will. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if the semi numbers are going to be reported. I hope so, because I think it'd be interesting doing all right on time. Uh, so, uh, some interesting, so uh, here's my total numbers on the screen, 489,000 and change. I disclosed this number a few days ago and pointed out that I am the outlier on the street. I have the highest number. Wall Street's at something like 440, 450, 445 if you want to split the difference. But what's really going on there is, uh, I don't know where they get their numbers. Dartboards, I think. Well, what's really going on is I'm not the highest. It turns out James Stevenson is quite a bit higher and uh, some other uh, newer analysts. And I say analysts, even though they're Twitter personalities and YouTube personalities, because we do more work than the Wall Street guys, but we just don't make it the big of bucks. Uh, James Stevenson uh, informed me that as of May 7th or 8th, he was at like 510 plus, maybe 517. I don't remember the number now, but it was a big one. And that's Pretty surprising. I don't know if he's revised it since then, but my 489 and change I'm comfortable with. Some quarters I really sweat. This one, not so much. <laughs> I'll be curious to see where it ends. I just really wanted to get out of the studio, man. It's so beautiful. Look at this day. Look at it. Do you see it? Let me see what you see. Oh yeah, that's lovely. I love it. Here, let me move you to the shade so you don't have the glare. There you are. There you are, my friend. So by the way, this weekend, I'm going to be uh, in Longview at the uh, 4th of July festivities. Uh, if you're out, uh, say hello. Uh, get in touch. I'm easy to reach, despite uh, what my critics say who pretend I'm not. So what have we got going on? We've got uh, a lumberjack festival. We've got a parade on the 4th. We've got fireworks. I know I complained <laughs> in, in a video for members only yesterday that we don't have fireworks. We do have fireworks. It was just announced this morning, I think. It's when I saw it in the paper. And so, what else do we have? Craft fair, booths, all kinds of food booths. I mean, a little carnival. It's the 4th of July, what do you expect? But it is a three-day event. So if you're in Longview, check it out. And for that matter, if anybody needs a level two CCS charger, I have one that I am giving away, uh, courtesy of Shockflow. They don't know I'm giving it away, but I am. So we've shot a video with it. It's a, it's a great product. Um, and they don't know about this either, but that's all right. So what have we got? Good time, good time, we made it. Anything else I need to mention? If you do want to help me out, I would love it. Uh, this month has been huge. Subscribers are up, views are up. Uh, the quality, everything's going great. Um, but it's still a tough racket. So you can support me on Twitter uh, by becoming a subscriber. You can support me on YouTube by becoming a member somewhere down here. I don't know, there's a button. And you can support me on Patreon by following the link in the description, patreon.com slash glossy news. All that stuff would be cool, but you don't gotta. What you gotta do is, if you haven't, hit subscribe. I'd like to hear in the comments, what's your number? What do you, what do you got? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully one of you clever robots gets it right, because I think that would be really cool. So, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Ooh, I know what I forgot to mention. On the 
16th of July. I'm going to be uh, speaking at the Tesla Owners Club of Oregon event. Uh, look that up. Tesla Owners Club of Oregon. I think the event is open to the public. It's uh, going to be a good one. Uh, anything else in July? No, I think that's it. So, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Oh, leave it under them in the comments below. Stay tuned. Stay juicy. Hopefully the wind didn't drive you too batty. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots uh, back in the studio. I suppose. <laughs>